course, other things also happening this weekend. And this year is the 15th year running of Africa's premier documentary event, the Encounters Film Festival. Now, the most talked about documentaries from around the world will be screened, including two 2013 Oscar nominees, three winners from Berlin Film Festival and from the prestigious Sundance Film Festival. But Encounters is not only about looking outwards. There will also be 13 documentary films screened that have a strong African and South African themed narrative. We are privileged to have in, in studio two of the award-winning filmmakers, Brita Wauer and Michelle Major, as well as the Encounters Film Di Festival director, Lisedi Oluko Moche. Ladies, good morning and welcome to the show. Good morning. Good morning. Great to have you here. Lisedi, I'm going to start off with you as the okay. film festival director. I mean, you must go through hundreds, if not thousands, of entries that are sent in. So how do you go about putting all of these together into one weekend of what is the top and best uh, documentaries? Wow, yeah. I mean, this year we received over 400 submissions. Wow. And, um, you know, we have a small and dedicated team that scouts through all of these films. We also look at the festivals, international festivals, mm -hmm. and what's hot, what's coming out, you know. And what we try and do is to create a balance, because ours is a platform to showcase the best in documentary, as you rightfully said, locally and internationally. Yeah, yeah. And so, so obviously you're also trying to balance what is relevant at the time. You yeah, know, what, yeah. What addresses Cur currency, the currency, <laughs> currency is, um, is important. Yeah. And um, creativity, the strength of the story, um, the strength of the voice of the story, the kind of access that the filmmakers get yeah. to their subject matters is also equally important. Yeah. And we're going to be taking a look at some of those right now. Of course, one of the international films that will be screened takes uh, the viewer deep into the private lives of tennis ace sisters Venus and Serena Williams. Now, ever since they started playing as young girls, they've provoked strong reactions from awe and admiration to suspicion and resentment. And they've been winning championships for over a decade now, pushing the limits of longevity in a sport that has seen many one-hit wonders. Take a look at this. So we're checking out the clips now. This is all some of the photos from uh, Serena and Venus. That, that's them as youngsters over there. Can you believe it? Um, <laughs> well, they, they really haven't changed much. That's their dad over there. And uh, of course, the lady behind all of this, Michelle. How was it? I, I need to talk to you. I mean, we've, as, as young tennis uh, upcoming stars or wanting to be tennis professionals one day, we looked up to people like uh, Serena and Venus Williams. What was it like for you to really get a behind the scenes and private look into their lives? Uh, Serena is this incredibly powerful, I mean, she's exactly how you would imagine. In fact, right now, she's number, she's the oldest number one in the world. Wow. And when we started filming with her, she had uh, just had a pulmonary embolism and nearly died. Wow. And so we weren't expecting that. We were hoping to film her playing tennis and instead she was in the hospital. But um, she was incredibly just powerful and always had that comeback spirit. Yeah. Uh, wonderful. What, what, what did you learn about them? What makes them so incredibly strong that they have this comeback spirit? They are dominating as sisters, uh, playing, like, like we said, in this sport that has seen many one-hit wonders, tennis players come and go, yet they've been able to be at the top of the game all the time. They both learned an incredible amount from their parents and their, their family in general. Their father instilled this incredible strength and sort of desire to um, fight uh, despite all of the adversities against them and their mother always taught, taught them to be strong-minded yeah. Well, we don't want to give too much away before people go and see the movie itself this weekend, uh, Venus and Serena. We've got a little, small little clip for you to enjoy. Take a look at this. What do you want to be when you grow up? Tennis player. I would like to be a tennis player. What's your ambition for Venus and Serena in tennis? Uh, for both of them to become number one in the world. Okay. Venus and Serena, part of the Encounters Film Festival taking place this weekend. And now another one of the international films due to be screened is In Heaven Underground, a historical piece about the 130-year-old Viennese Jewish cemetery, which astonishingly survived a deliberate and calculated destruction of all things Jewish by Nazis during the, World War, the Second World War. Now the, the cemetery remained in Jewish hands throughout the war and even provided a safe haven for some who lived through those times. Take a look at this clip. So we're going to have a, a few of them, there, there we go, so I'm going to talk to, to you, uh, Barita. You, you are in charge of this film and you are from Berlin yourself, so this story really has deep roots where your life is concerned. Take me through the process of, of making this film and how it, how it, how it worked through your life. You know, um, I was very skeptical when someone asked me if I could imagine to make a film about a cemetery. I thought that must be a terrible, boring thing to look at stones, gravestones. And yeah, then I imagine it's the largest Jewish cemetery in Europe still in use. 
And yeah, there are some miracles around. And I thought um, I have to find some stories behind the graves about yes. the people who are buried there and also about the living that's still going on there. Yeah. Because there is a family who lives on a cemetery. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there are lots of funny things taking place. And so. And That's I mean, we, we're sorry. talking about world wars here, uh, one of the greatest tragedies of humanity, the Jewish yes. Holocaust during, the, during those times. What, what did you get personally from, from watching this, or from making this rather, because I mean, you were part of this process? Yes, you know, it's, um, I was so touched by, you know, in the beginning, um, I tried to find people who had uh, memories on this time. Um, and uh, of course, in Berlin, there are not many Jewish people anymore. Mm -hmm. And so I started to uh, write an article and to try to find some people yes. around the world. And I thought maybe 20 or 30 people will answer me. But within two weeks, I've got 250 letters from almost everywhere, also from South Africa, but wow. from Australia and Canada and uh, South America. And the people uh, sent me letters filled with pictures and books. And it was overwhelming. And I thought, OK, this is so touchable for them to have their ancestors there lying in Berlin at the cemetery. Yeah. And yes, I think that was the most overwhelming um, situation for me oh. and yeah. Fantastic. Well, ladies, Miss Eddie, Michelle, Brita, thank you very, very much for taking the time out. I yes. Actually, just quickly, so the festival doesn't run for the weekend, it's until the 16th. It, until the 16th yeah, of yeah, June. Yeah, so it's for 10 the days. Six, to the 16th exactly. in Johannesburg and here at the waterfront, VNA waterfront, New, at the Fugard. New Metro, mm -hmm. New Metro at the VNA waterfront and at the Fugard. There we go. And of course, all that information will also be on our website, expressoshow.com. But thank you very much for taking your time, ladies, to come thank in and tell us about much. this wonderful festival. I hope that I can make it to it. But You're we're gonna going take, to make it. <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to make it, as Mercedes said. We're going to take a quick ad break. We'll be right back.